shouldn't be late. Welcome to the Maria Sanchez Show. Thank you so much for watching. We are live. It's Tuesday, November 23rd, and we're here from 4 o'clock on Monday through Friday. And then also as the needs in the community and the county prevail, uh, we're there for you. So please contact us via the website at kadytv.com, which you know that's why you're here because you're watching us on the website. <laughs> um, but if there's an event that you'd like us to help promote or to learn more about or to there's an issue in your community that you'd like us to help explore or you want us to be there, just let us know. I'm Maria at kadytv.com and then that way we can see how our manpower is and how the logistics are because obviously as the year comes to a close there's a lot going on not only with the holidays but the end of the year and the businesses and etc. So without further ado, if it's Tuesday, they must mean that it's Sue's Montgomery in studio with us. We have senior segments with Sue's and Sue's has brought a guest today. One of my favorite people. And actually, Bob, you can introduce yourself, but uh, this is, uh, and he will tell you his story in just a moment, but Bob, just a little bit of a background. I met Bob when he was a resident and he was rehabbing from some surgery in our facility at the Ventura, uh, Venturin, which is next door to the townhouse. And Bob became an active participant in our class. And now he has graduated, he is home, he's rehabbed okay. back with Lois, back at home again. And Bob and Mark oh, pretty frequently come in on Mondays and still join our class, which is great because they always add so much to our class. But Bob's got a great story, and I think this is what's going to be exciting. So I'm going to just shut up and let Bob roll and introduce himself. Well, I, as you've noticed, I'm Bob McCampbell. I uh, grew up in these parts. I was born in the old St. John's Hospital in uh, uh, Oxnard. It's since been demolished. Uh, I don't know how they could have possibly have demolished such a wonderful site, but uh, it's gone. Uh, I had the honor of being born there mainly because of the only hospital around these parts. My <laughs> folks really lived in in Fillmore, uh, where I spent the first five years of my life. And, uh, then I, I managed to get to, into four or five different schools in the first grade. I don't think that propelled me on to greatness, but... Uh, Did you fail? Uh, no, I didn't oh, okay. fail. No, <laughs> just it only, took, question. It only took me a year to get. You know, I had the standard uh, time. You just did you move a lot? Is that what well, happened? Yes, I oh, moved okay. a bit. And uh, uh, moving along with my uh, rather ordinary life uh, as a child, I grew up in Ventura Avenue. Uh, it was a great 
place for youth. It's a real uh, American uh, setting with uh, good swimming holes in the old Ventura River and uh, where boys all went bare butt, you know, and they wouldn't be caught dead in a bathing suit there in those days. I never but. heard this story. <laughs> <laughs> so skinny dipping, hey? <laughs> and in those days, it wasn't against the law. To, you know, is it against the law? <laughs> to, <laughs> to never, be, what is that called? Public nakedness or something? Oh, oh, geez. I'm glad we didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, anyhow, I did have a wonderful youth out on the Adelaide. In Barnes of Ventura Avenue and the great river that was uh, unimpeded flowing through there. Uh, I had a, uh, one of the better things that happened to me in my youth is my mother. She, uh, she uh, was a bit of a tennis player, and that was something for those days. She, she had uh, uh, gotten her dad to build she and her sister a tennis court wow sort of a dirt one i think i've never i never saw it but it's uh, pretty progressive but uh or a precursor to clay she, they yeah. uh they took the uh sears roebuck or or montgomery ward catalog i think and got ordered tennis equipment how neat uh somewhere they'd seen and heard or read about tennis and she dragged me out of the tennis course when i was about 10 years old and i uh i I was very reluctant to do that. I thought it was a sissy sport, or, or I'd be labeled as one. And I was in danger of that anyway, because I was a pretty little guy at that time. But uh, uh, at any rate, uh, she insisted, and uh, we played some tennis, and she taught me the rudimentary parts of it. And uh, uh, I finally got thinking, that's kind of fun. and. Uh, as I went to uh, uh, junior high school, the old Cabrillo High School there, but then was going between the uh, seventh and the tenth grade. Now is that Cabrillo Middle School currently? Yeah, that's, that's it. Okay, before they built a high school here, that was a high school. Uh, no, it wasn't a high school. It went through the tenth went through the tenth grade. Okay. They had three more grades. Uh, the uh, ninth. The, so well, that would be like the, junior high is what yeah, we call well, it. Yeah. It, was a, it was called a junior high there. Okay. But uh, but it just uh, stopped at the 10th grade and you moved on hmm. to 11th, 12th. Yeah, it was just, just about 11th and 12th. I was trying to add another grade no, to high school. Remember, yeah. well, what confused me is the, the high, then high school of 11th and 12th grade was part of the junior, junior college and you could go oh, to the really? 13th and 14th grade. I never heard of such a thing. Yeah, for a while, there was but that. It was considered a community college then, or uh, it was. I don't know. I should have researched that. No. I, <laughs> what was your curious. family's business? What did well, your parents my do? Dad uh, was uh, superintendent of the Seaside Oil Creek Refinery uh, out on the avenue, and uh, we were very lucky. Uh, uh, had such a wonderful escape from. Uh, Depression. I never knew there was a depression, except some of my friends in the neighborhood mm. were certainly hurt by it, and families were in dire straits. But I never. We took vacations, and uh, my gosh, he made over two hundred dollars a month all through. <laughs> that was big money. <laughs> big money. It was huge money. Everybody else was in lines. Yeah. Well, anyhow, that, that part sort of. Uh, Sort of my life growing up, uh, I, as I got uh, uh, later on, I went to the, uh, my folks, unfortunately, uh, 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 split up, and um, oh that was a tragedy. Uh, no, you were in me. school when this happened? Yeah, I was in about the sixth or seventh grade, oh, I think. Oh boy, that's that pretty it. dramatic for a kid. Uh, I was a non-sibling, so I was an only oh child. Oh, my God. Uh, and that was a bad thing. The good thing was I ran into a boy named Gordon Kimball, for, whose family uh, has a nice road named after him. Yeah, is that the same? Yeah. Oh, our new com community yeah. park? Yeah, and he was a tennis player. And 
from then on, uh, I could do something better than a lot of the other kids at school. Good. Uh, like, really, because I'd done it more. For somebody that age, our very few kids that wielded a tennis racket. Probably saved you. Yeah, it sure saved me. I uh, moved, my mother and I moved to Santa Barbara after a stint in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, and uh, I went through high school there, and a highlight of my high school days was being able to uh, play tennis and had an ability to play on the tennis team, which was big stuff there then. It wasn't sure. It wasn't considered uh, something that was out of left field. In, uh, in Santa Barbara schools. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it was a, a, a good time, and I uh, even got to play it. I was the last man on our team of eight uh, players, mm -hmm. and uh, I, w uh, I was playing doubles, and the sh coach put me on with the number one guy who was, who was a ranked player in Southern California. And uh, we were playing against uh, uh, Jack Kramer, who was an all-time oh famous uh, that's player. That's huge. It was an odd situation. And the uh, Montebello team put uh, Kramer on, uh, took him off the, the singles list because he figured he had two or three yeah singles players that could win their matches and he he knew that the last man on their team uh, needed a little help and uh, so my uh, partner number one Ventura guy uh, or Santa Barbara guy at that time uh, and I played Jack Kramer as the semifinals of the CIF and uh, we won the clinching match Boy, uh, uh, playing against them. And the, my the, first tennis racket was a Jack Kramer. Mine too. Oh, oh, yeah. racket, which Me I still too. have <laughs> to this day. This well, is a, a lot big people, deal. A lot of people played with those. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Sure. So, and then we'll be back with uh, we're visiting with Bob the Campbell and Suze Montgomery. It's seniors, Suze and seniors, and uh, somehow I fit in there. And you're watching the Maria Sanchez show right here on KEDYTV.com. The Maria Sanchez Show is about the county, by the county, and for the county. Whether we're broadcasting live from the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library, checking in with the leaders in our communities, hearing from our elected officials, helping to promote public safety, preparedness, and wellness. We are here for the needs of Ventura County. The Maria Sanchez Show is also about entertainment and events. Sharing information, creating awareness, and supporting those in need. Won't you join us as we rewrite the rules of local television on the Maria Sanchez Show at www.kadytv.com. Welcome back to the Maria Sanchez Show. We are live. It is Tuesday, November 23rd. Hopefully everybody's going to be safe and sound and happy Thanksgiving early to you. We're going to talk a little bit about that later in the program, about the new TSA guidelines and what you can do to avoid some of the complications. We're continuing our conversation with in-studio guests Bob McCampbell and Suze Montgomery. And uh, Mr. McCampbell was uh, born in Ventura County in the now defunct and destroyed St. John's Hospital, as he just <laughs> so eloquently put it, and has, is the subject of this autobiography. And Suze, why don't you uh, set the tone oh. for that? I, I don't even remember how we started with this, Bob, but we were well, talking about veterans, remember? And yeah, I think that's yeah. maybe how the whole subject started. And Bob, is, you know, was a veteran of the war, and most of the men in my room were veterans. When I took a poll one day, and every single one of them were that was sitting there. But Bob was extraordinary, because Bob had extraordinary adventures. 
And I mean, yeah. the, and he actually wrote a book, which is the one I have in my hand. And like I said, I pick every time I pick it up, I start chuckling because he really has this great style of writing, and the stories are just vivid. And you were, let's see, how old were you when you enlisted? Well, uh, I was working. I'd gotten a year of uh, college okay. uh, at, UC, at UCSB, and um, it wasn't UCSB then, but it was uh, Santa Barbara College, Teachers College, I think mm -hmm. it was. Uh, I graduated from UCSB uh, as a part of the uh, fraternity of uh, California colleges. Uh, I got in, uh, I had to play, applied, I was uh, working one summer as a, as a stock boy um, and uh, the few jobs were opening up and uh, I was just amazed that somebody asked, uh, asked me if I wanted to earn twenty dollars a week and I said I sure did. And I, although gasoline was uh, only about twenty five or thirty cents a gallon then I still needed a car to, to uh, uh, go out on the town. I couldn't go very far. I couldn't even go to bars at that time. I was a little young. Um, but I had talked to some fellas in, uh, at the college who had applied for a, uh, a, uh, a pilot training in the uh, RAF. They had to go through the Canadian Really? Uh, program. Uh, With the Air Force? Uh, not our Air Force. The we Royal. weren't at war. Royal, yeah. we, were, we were trying to uh, not mention the fact that we were very close friends of the British. Uh, but uh, I had uh, spent some time building model airplanes and uh, had a lot of airplane magazines. I bought at a secondhand mag magazine shop on Ventura Avenue. And uh, I got quite an interest there, those things. I kept those for a long time. Hmm. Uh, but from the time I was milking a cow on the winter ranch in, uh, uh, in Clare, uh, Ontario uh, area, uh, Covina, I guess it was closer to, mm -hmm. beautiful ranch. One day uh, I'd been on... Uh, been uh, working there for uh, uh, the summer between my junior and senior year in, in high school in Santa Barbara. And I was, I was milking a cow and uh, the, the radio that was broadcasting my music, which is good bandstand jazz, you know, at that time, uh, was interrupted to say that uh, the Germans had invaded Poland, and by treaty, uh, uh, the uh, French and the British had declared war on Germany. Wow. And I got thinking, gee whiz, that's very big stuff. Uh, uh, I thought maybe I might be involved in that sometime. I was still 16, 17 years old. And, uh, but. I still kept my interest up from that time, gave up cow making, milking. Uh, that was just one of my jobs but at that time, but it was a good one. Uh, uh, as I say, I was uh, working as a stock boy at uh, uh, a large 5 and 10 in, uh, in uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, you weren't they, commuting from Santa Barbara to Covina. Uh, no, 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 oh. no. I stayed the whole summer down there. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was the summer. Yeah. But uh, I had managed to get an application into the, uh, the, the United States uh, Air Force. And, uh, but again, we were not yet in the, uh, in the fracas. Uh, we were helping under the table uh, through Lynn Lee's and things. Uh, Roosevelt trying to help Churchill, who was the last country alive and mm -hmm. <laughs> True. not conquer, unconquered. Uh, uh, but uh, at any rate, I, my application came through. The 
Pearl Harbor was attacked, of course, and uh, my application was processed rather rapidly uh, for that reason. And we, uh, I got into the Air Force uh, Flying Cadet Program. Uh, I was, let's see, how old was I? I guess by that time I was 18. Oh my God, you were that barely, young? Barely 18. Uh, oh. And uh, I went through, uh, had very, a lot of difficulty learning to fly as well as the other, like, Compatriots, most of the guys that were with me and uh, flying little biplanes and things that had uh, college training uh, on the government program and with their college curriculum. And as it was, they washed out about 60% of our oh, class. Really? And what I did barely squeeze through uh, uh, and my book. Uh, indicates. Wait, and can I ask you a question? Sure. Can I interrupt you? I noticed on the back here, and I, I've noticed this before, but I think everybody at home should be aware of this as well. You were not just flying airplanes. I mean, you actually got injured. You got the Distinguished Flying Cross. You got a Purple Heart, an Air Medal, and a Presidential Unit Citation. That's no small potatoes, Bob. Well, yeah. That's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's a very humble, self effacing man, believe yeah. me. Uh, Bob is, once you get to know him, he's just very humble. I mean, he, he's that. always been this way. But when you see, you know, he wrote the book, but when you see these commendations, this is not some, you know, an this is somebody, flyer. this is not an yeah. unordinary man. And like you said, an ordinary guy in extraordinary times. I disagree with this, honey. You're an extraordinary <laughs> no. man, and this no, was I... extraordinary times. You know what's interesting about, I don't know if you know, but Condoleezza Rice just issued her uh, autobiography. Oh, yes. I'd like to read uh, that. This month, and it's uh, Extraordinary Ordinary People. Oh, really? And She's still in your thunder. It's about her parents. Can I sue? So, yeah, yeah, I think so. That's copyright <laughs> infringement, Bob. Five years, <laughs> five years on her with that title. <laughs> We're yeah, going to take wait. a quick break, and when we come back, we'll uh, continue our conversation with Mr. Bob McCampbell and Suze Montgomery. You're watching the Maria Sanchez Show right here on KADYTV.com. The Maria Sanchez Show is about the county, by the county, and for the county. Whether we're broadcasting live from the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library, Checking in with the leaders in our communities. Hearing from our elected officials. Helping to promote public safety. Preparedness. And wellness. We are here for the needs of Ventura County. The Maria Sanchez Show is also about entertainment and events. Sharing information, creating awareness, and supporting those in need. Won't you join us as we rewrite the rules of local television on the Maria Sanchez Show at www.kadytv.com. Welcome back to the Maria Sanchez Show. We're live. We're live every Monday through Friday at 4 o'clock. And today's Tuesday, November 23rd, so you know we're live. And we're finishing our conversation with Ventura County resident and uh, fighter pilot extraordinaire, Lieutenant Colonel Bob McCampbell and Susan Montgomery, who has facilitated this conversation. And thank you again for taking the time. And thank you for your service and for your sacrifice. Uh, thank you. Absolutely. For uh, your were kind words. Uh, I uh, never thought of myself as a fighter pilot. Uh, got through flying school pretty er easy after, fairly easily after uh, going through the steps, uh, basic, primary, basic, and advanced. And, and we, uh, I initially 
was sent up to Painfield, Washington, who fly fighter planes, and somehow they they threw people in various bins for some reason. <laughs> They decided I fit it in the fighter pilot bin, so uh, and I never knew why. Uh, huh. It was they probably wouldn't trust me with other people in the airplane. <laughs> no, you probably were pretty Aggressive. even tempered. <laughs> even tempered. But uh, Let it but uh, I, we got up to uh, Painfield, which is now the big Boeing plant. Oh yeah, up above Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, yeah. 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 been there tour that place now. Huh. None of that was there. But the Army was there and I was there. Army Air Corps it was in those days. And, and what did I find when I got there? We had one airplane per squadron. What? And uh, this was September of 1942. And uh, almost a year uh, till the anniversary of the heinous uh, Crimes that Japan <laughs> right. led us to. But one plane? One plane? One plane per squadron. That's all we had. So, Shared planes? Uh, that, you can imagine there was an argument with that, I'm sure, in the, uh, yeah. amongst the brass as to which airplanes to send overseas and which one to take oh for people goodness. training. Uh, they fairly quickly overcame that, and we did, as a few months went by, uh, started getting some uh, airplanes out of the uh, uh, assembly line. And uh, that, was, that was an interesting time. Uh, it was an airplane that I was given was a P-39, uh, given, not given, I was stuck in. <laughs> and it was not the greatest airplane in the world. It was an airplane that had an engine behind the cockpit with a hollow drive shaft going up between your legs, sort of, and uh, and a cannon emplaced in the nose of, and, and the uh, drive shaft. The uh, the nose, the empty nose, housed uh, cannon ammunition, and uh, uh, the uh, plane was. Uh, you can imagine an airplane that had cannon shells in the nose uh, and fired them would have some problems with balance. They were imbalanced uh, uh, in certain times and so they had to, we flew them most of the time with sandbags in the nose oh and uh, other times we flew them with cannon in the nose. We got to fire the cannon I think once or twice and they'd boop, boop, boom. And they'd jam. Oh my <laughs> god. And well they finally uh, were able to get some of those problems uh, solved and upgrade the airplane a bit but I uh, we lost a lot of people in that airplane. Uh, we've got... Is it because of a malfunctioning of the plane or was it, it pilot error? Uh, I'd like to say it was malfunctioning of the airplane. Uh, but the problem I had, I was up doing aer uh, aerobatics, and uh, which of course you had to learn to do well sure. and practice uh, to be a fighter pilot. And uh, suddenly I found myself uh, tumbling, teal over te uh, kettle. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, then coming out in a flat spin, those high flat spin, and I dropped the landing gear and everything, uh, flaps, uh, gunned it wide open, and nothing happened. I was just coming down like oh a leaf. God. Oh my gosh. Relatively slowly, but fast enough to kill me. And when I got down out of the government's altitude into mine, I decided to get out. But that airplane had, a, had two little car-like doors uh, on each side of the cockpit. And car light handles mm -hmm. inside, uh, something like the cars that we've had in those days, which are a little different than our handles today, but, sure, I, remember. but uh, 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 I tried to get out of the thing and uh, I couldn't get them open. I neglected to pull some pins out, uh, but I fumbled and finally 
hit as hard I could the door as hard as I could with my shoulder and just rolled out with the door oh, yeah. and um, uh, it, it, uh, I didn't uh, I, I hit the tail with my head just mm -hmm. grazed it and uh, it uh, kind of knocked me out mm -hmm. but not for very long and it says with the chute opening I bonk it uh, shook me awake and uh, I looked up at this beautiful womb of a uh, canopy of a tech parachute that's uh, nicely floating me down. Thank God for that. I uh, hadn't had any practice in a parachute, so I was, <laughs> I remember I was, uh, I, I was trying to uh, pull the cords around so that I was uh, facing uh, forward uh, with the wind. And I never did quite get that done before the thing I hit the ground. And, uh, so did you it, land on your back? Yeah, I, I did. Ooh. I landed, uh, but just uh, not too hard. Uh, that wasn't too bad. They I, didn't train you how to and fall? And I went in between uh, the apple orchard trees that I was in. And and this was where, in Washington? This this was in Santa Rosa, California. By oh. this time, we'd gone through several places and we'd gotten a lot of airplanes by that time. This was getting, this is uh, early 1943. And uh, I was, uh, I, there was a couple of pretty girls in a convertible coming down this country <laughs> road. And I flagged them down and then I noticed I was bleeding all over the place with my, well nothing serious. That was secondary, right? <laughs> yeah. You saw the sorry. girls first, yeah. yeah no, the girls, the, yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. But uh, uh, then I realized what I did. This is a beautiful, relatively new convertible. Anything new then was oh, especially yeah. good because they stopped making cars. And, That's uh, true. Uh, but uh, behind this girl was a uh, old guy in a truck and a, uh, some sort of a farm truck, and and I decided I'd better take a ride with him and mess up his. It's oh, a with your street. blood, <laughs> and, and uh, which uh, which sort of disappointed the girls. I don't think because of me. It's just uh, the incident uh, was wow. uh, interesting. Uh, but he got me to a clinic of some kind. It was an old farmhouse with a doctor, and uh, he sewed me up, and I went on from there. Uh, I uh, that that was. Uh, my start as a fighter pilot, and I, but I was very uh, concerned about that airplane. <laughs> I bet. Uh, I wasn't so confident with it. Uh, I might have been, but oh, I got sent uh, overseas uh, as a replacement pilot instead of going with a unit. Uh, four or five of my friends. Uh, well, Starting out uh, a little after midnight uh, with orders, to, uh, flew me to Florida. We goofed around there for a while, had fun swimming and and uh, partying. Uh, uh, in fact, we were a little overdue by, uh, at the place we were supposed to report, uh, but they were so anxious to get the cannon fodder overseas that they forgive us or gave us uh, uh, that little hiccup, but uh, before we run up. out of time, I'm sorry to interrupt. I want to, is your book readily available? Sure. Okay. Can we? Oh, talk about the book. Yeah, yeah. because uh, we've got just a few minutes. Oh. So the the title is An Ordinary Guy in Extraordinary Times. Yeah. Bob McCampbell is the author, which is our guest today. And um, via Amazon, or is it in bookstores? Or? Uh, they're in Amazon. Uh, also, uh, they had them at Borders up till recently. I don't know if they have any now. I, oh, that'd be good. Uh, uh, Barnes & Noble? Bar no. Because the Borders is closed yeah. now in uh, Thousand Oaks. Yeah. Ours in Oxnard is still open. Is it? Yeah, oh, okay. it's open. Yeah, yeah. it's in Tennis Center, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, um, the Oxnard Tennis Center has. The tennis <laughs> yeah. Center. Okay. That's a plug for the kid. Yeah. <laughs> tennis still concerns, <laughs> serves you well. Yeah. 
Um, so, and is there anything else we should know before we, we say goodbye? No, but I mean, uh, just, you know, I'm uh, in off camera, you don't see Mark and you don't see Lois's family. And uh, there, it, I've gotten to know the family quite well. And there, he's got other children. And uh, I just have to say that Bob is one of my favorite people. I mean, Bob is extraordinary. I disagree with him. He's not ordinary. He's extraordinary. He's humble, self-effacing, yes, but he's got a sweetheart. And the whole family is just wonderful. I mean, they're just, this is what America is. This is, this exemplifies a true American. And I'm just humbled when he comes to our class, and I'm just happy to be his friend. And I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you yeah. for being here. Well, thank this you was for a big, thank, thank you, you for so having us. Much for having me. And uh, extraordinary man. Suze Montgomery, our guest, Bob McCampbell, the book, an Ordinary Guy in Extraordinary times. times. And you're watching the Maria Sanchez Show. When we come back, we have a little holiday uh, cheer to share with you about something you might want to do and to help a great cause. You're watching the Maria Sanchez Show right here on KEDYTV.com. <laughs>